Hey everyone, welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Distributed Counter Firebase extension. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like on the video and subscribe to our channel. We would definitely appreciate it. But without any further ado, let's jump into it. So Austin, tell us a little bit about this distributed counter Firebase extension. Yeah, so this Firebase extension is great to add to your application whenever you need to count high velocity actions such as views, shares, maybe likes. Um, so today in this video, we'll be adding it to our, uh, our small batch devs blog in the form of whenever you visit a blog post, we'll be increasing the view count for that blog post. So this extension is going to be writing each count into our Firestore database. And because Cloud Firestore has a write limit of one write per second per document, this extension is going to write the counts into different documents, like neighboring documents in a subcollection. And this extension calls those neighboring documents shards. So this extension, so this extension shards the writes across multiple documents in a counter shards subcollection. Each client only increments their own unique shard, and basically there's background workers provided by this extension that monitor and aggregate these shards and go ahead and update your main documents. So we're on the Firebase console extensions page here. And if you just scroll down to explore extensions, the distributed counter is pretty low on the list, but once you scroll down, you can hit see details. And uh, this page will tell you all you need to know about this uh, extension. So uh, like the sharding we mentioned earlier is mentioned in the second paragraph here. It dives a little bit deeper into the details of how the sharding works and why it's being used. Uh, it also talks about some of the other features of this extension. Um, you know, it can scale up really nicely. It can work offline. It can uh, coagulate all the offline counters and the online counters once users come back online. And then it's also talking about the billing down below. Now, one thing you do need to know about this extension is that there is a billing cost associated with using it and installing it, even if you don't go past the free tier of Firebase's normal pricing plans. Uh, so you will need to be on the Blaze plan for this to work. Uh, you will also be charged, I think it's one penny a month at the time of this recording. Uh, so it's not that much, but you just need to be aware that there is some type of cost associated with this. You'll also notice on this page that there is uh, some client example code. Um, there's some TypeScript up here, and then there's also a compiled minified JavaScript. Um, and we are going to be adding this TypeScript to our, our blog app a little bit later. So you might want to like open this, uh, this GitHub page in a different tab just so we can reference it later. So now we're just going to go ahead and actually install this distributed counter extension. And we're going to choose the Firebase project that we're going to be installing it to just to our main blog here. And this will provide a little bit of information about the cloud functions that it's going to add for us. There's a, uh, timed control core counter extension function, um, an on write, a worker. Um, we're just gonna hit next to this. It's just once again, uh, reiterating the billing that it's going to be adding to our, our bill, I guess, uh, typically about one cent a month um, if you're just using this for basic purposes. And this is just letting us know that it's creating a couple of new service accounts, um, the cloud data store user and the cloud scheduler admin. And you can see these in the Google Cloud uh, platform account that is associated with your Firebase account. So if you need to, you know, delete them at any point, I believe if you delete the extension, it'll also remove them. But if you need to, you know, take a look at them for whatever reason, you can find them there. And the last thing to be configured here is just the location for your cloud functions, the document path uh, for the internal state for the counter shards and then the frequency of how frequent the controller core function is to be run. Um, and we just have it set to one minute. It's set to one minute by default. Um, and this really doesn't add too much additional cost to running this function. I think it was maybe an additional cent. Um, but if you want it to run every 60 minutes or whatnot, uh, you can change that here. 
So we're just gonna go ahead and click install extension and give it a couple minutes to install. We're gonna go ahead and walk through the steps to finish setting it up. And you can see the first step here is to actually update our security rules in Firestore because we're going to need to allow this extension and the uh, different activities from our client application to write to different parts of the Firestore database. So we're just going to copy the code that they've given us and then we're going to paste it into our cloud function security rules and update it so that it matches our database structure. So you can see we're now in our security rules and we've got the highlighted code that is matching our specific database uh, setup because we've got posts, whereas the example had pages. Uh, these posts pertain to our individual blog posts on our website. You can see we're using the is post view update function for allowing writing to this particular path. And that is post views update function is going to make sure that the uh, write command coming in from the client is writing to a field called post underscore views on that document that it's trying to update. And it's also gonna make sure that it's actually trying to increment that value and not put some other bogus value in there. Um, so make sure to update this match path, this posts, post ID, counter shards path for your specific database. Obviously the counter shards part will stay the same because that's part of this extension. Now we're going to actually add this counter service client code that we mentioned earlier in the video to our application and also integrate that with our actual database service that we have in our code. Um, so once again, you can hit on, click on this link right here that will take you to the sample uh, client code. It's a GitHub repository that you can just really copy the code from into your own application. Um, it actually might be this one for the TypeScript version, um, but we'll also actually also provide a link in the description that you can go to just in case you miss these. So what we did here is we went ahead and added that code under a counter service TypeScript file. Um, and we just literally just copied and pasted it in here. Um, we don't really need to dive too deep into this code right now. Um, we're just going to be interfacing it with it a little bit in our database service. So now in our database service, what we're doing here is basically anytime someone tries to get a specific post, we want to increment that post view counter. And what we're doing just here is setting up some variables. We need to pass in a document reference into that counter. Um, so this is the document up until the, um, the posts, the, the, the specific uh, blog post. And we're just passing that in here with, along with the post views, uh, we just have an enum here that denotes our post underscore views string. That's basically where we're going to be saving our counter. Um, and then we're just calling counter dot increment by, and we're incrementing it by one whenever you read a post. That's really all there is to this. Um, we also add the, we add this post views onto our, uh, our blog post model, which I can show you real quick, just so that every time we pull down this information, we have a field that actually contains the counter post views number. So as I mentioned, we add the post views here. I have it as string. I think it can be a number as well, um, but we just have it as string. Um, so whenever we pull down a new blog post object, uh, we'll actually get the post views. And these are obviously in observables as well. So whenever they change, we get those updates in our blog application which we'll go ahead and demo right now. So here we are in our blog post application. This is running off of our local server. So, uh, you know, we have set up the Firebase extension and started our server locally from just running the Angular ng serve command. And so we, we placed the counters on our specific blog post, so we won't see them here. But if we go and click read on one of our blog posts, we'll actually see it right here this post has been read seven times and that seven is coming from this counter extension it's updating every time we reload the page and we call that get posts function that's going to wrap it up for our tutorial today on the counter extension in firebase uh, please let us know how you integrate this extension in your application just leave a comment down below as always thank you very much for watching this video we definitely really appreciate it uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, maybe even hit the notification bell um, so you'll be notified whenever we post more videos. Also, be sure to check out our Small Batch Devs podcast. 
It's on some of your main podcasting platforms, but we'll also leave some links to those down in the description. So please go check that out. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you very soon. Peace.